from what I remember, like being really, really small, coming to Paisley, there was always sort of a hustle and bustle about the city, sort of you'd expect with like the west end of Glasgow, but now it seems to be just, well, there's nobody about, really, and uh, not much happening, and everything seems to be run down or shut down. It's just a bit of a shame. Paisley is Scotland's largest town with a population of just under 73,000 people and forms the sixth largest settlement in the country. It boasts its own abbey, airport, Premier Division football team and university. In its heyday, Paisley was one of the most important industrial, political and cultural towns in Scotland, famous in the 18th and 19th centuries for its weaving and textiles industry, especially cotton with a distinctive Paisley pattern. But the town has been in social and economic decline since the 1970s, with the town now more usually associated with violence, drugs and poverty. All the major mills and factories are now closed and many businesses have moved away from the area to out-of-town shopping centres and developments like Brayhead and Silverburn. Dee Shannon is the store manager of WH Smith in Paisley, one of the biggest retailers still on Paisley High Street. She explains what kind of problems face retailers still trading in Paisley today. I arrived here approximately four years ago. Um, we had two floors at that time. Now we've been reduced to one floor, the ground floor only. Um, the busiest period at Christmas, we were able to open, for instance, all days on Sundays, and now it's hardly worth a while open 12 till four. So people are definitely shopping elsewhere. The government seemed to finally be starting to address the issue of Paisley's decline. And this is helped along by the fact that the local MSP is the leader of the Scottish Labour Party and leader of the opposition, Wendy Alexander. I think we are moving away from our past. I mean, for example, my office is in one of the converted mills. We've seen one of the other mills converted into beautiful housing in the recent past and a new shopping development created. So I think the answer is uh, we're beginning to see the value in some of the magnificent architecture we have in turning them over from old industrial uses either to housing or indeed to business use. It's, it's how do we make our part of the world a proper leisure destination in its own right and one of the things that again has changed over the last few years is the council looking at how we market Renfrewshire and the area round about Glasgow Airport as a a leisure and tourism destination in its own right, not just as somewhere you drive through on, 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 on the way to Glasgow city centre. In 2006, Fergusley Park, an area near Paisley's West End, was named by the Scottish Executive as the most deprived area of the country. Looking at some of the housing, it's not hard to see why. But regeneration of areas like this are a key priority, and moves such as St Mirren FC building their new stadium within the Fergusley Park area go some way to trying to change the district. However, other areas such as Foxbar, Hunter Hill, Glenifer, and even the town centre still suffer from lack of investment in regeneration. I mean, we had um, regeneration in our area, which is a, was a social inclusion area, a deprived area, and um, I think there were six areas in Paisley that had feasibility studies done that cost £30,000 a time, which never came to anything. It's not all doom and gloom, however, and one success story amid Paisley's downturn has been that of Coates Observatory. Through innovative promotional programmes and close links with the local schools, it remains a prosperous and popular tourist attraction. Observatory officer John Presley is keen to tell as many people about this feather in Paisley's cap. Coast Observatory is a fairly unique attraction. There are actually only four public observatories in the whole of Scotland, only two of which are actually working on a, a reasonable regular basis, that's ourselves and uh, the observatory through in Dundee. And the public observatories, uh, from as far as I can determine, are a purely Scottish phenomena, so really one of only four in the world that are open to the public on the sort of basis that we operate here. There is definite evidence that Paisley's in a bit of a decline at the moment. Uh, there's no denying that fact. You walk down the high street, you do see for sale too late everywhere. One way we've tried to counter the decline in uh, sort of general visitors coming through the doors is to target schools more and try and get actual uh, school kids through the door. That then pays off. We've got, uh, they, they come with the school during the day. We tend to find a lot of the kids coming back at night, bring the parents along as well. If places like Coates Observatory are helped by the government and the local council, there's no reason why Paisley can't be a great place to visit and to live in again. Most people who live in Paisley would be glad to see the town market itself in a more attractive way. 
I think it would be a really good idea to either make it one thing or another. At the moment, it appeals to no one. I think it would be a really good idea to either make it appeal solely to students or solely to like better off middle-aged people that can come and use this as a sort of retirement town. I think maybe to change it to make it more like a student village or something in cafes and um, I don't know, I think a, a different emphasis would make a difference. Certainly though, it seems most people are optimistic about Paisley's future. But yeah, there's uh, certain proof that the Paisley, the Paisley is it's, it's turned a corner I think and hopefully we'll start to see uh, an improvement rather than this continued decline that we've been witnessing for several years to come. And hopefully uh, ourselves in the observatory, the museum, other cultural and heritage will play a central role in that. Uh, a lot of people, Paisley buddies, want to stay in Paisley, which is a good thing, but we have to address the issues that surround the town, um, as I said previously. And I think we could encourage people to come back, but they have, they have to have a reason to stay here. If Paisley is given the proper level of investment and regeneration that it needs to combat the years of decline that have affected it, there's no reason why it can't, once again, be one of Scotland's most prominent towns.